Thanks for joining us. This is Nick McPhee, and in this video we'll go over the anatomy of a simple function definition in the Racket programming language. Functions are one of the most powerful tools in all of computer science. You've probably seen function definitions like double and area here in math class. The first says that the double of some number n is the result of adding n to itself. The second says that the area of a rectangle with a given width and height is the product of those two values. In this video, we'll look at how to define simple functions like these in the Racket programming language. Let's start by looking at a simple function definition in Racket. Open paren, define, open paren, double, space n, close paren, open paren, plus, space n, space n, close paren, close paren. This has three top-level parts. The define expression, which I've highlighted here in blue, the name and arguments section, which I've highlighted in green, and the body, which I've highlighted in red. We'll look at each of these in turn. All racket function definitions are built with a define expression. These always, always, always consist of an open parenthesis, the keyword define, and, after the other parts are filled in, a closed parenthesis which matches the open parenthesis that we started with. The final closed parenthesis is often next to other closing parentheses that are wrapping up the body. This can make reading those parentheses a bit confusing. A common mistake is omitting that final parenthesis. Another common mistake is placing the body after the closed parenthesis in the define statement instead of before it. If you place it after, then it's outside the define expression, and Racket will be all sad and confused. In this example, the body, open parens, multiply n, n, close paren, is outside the define statement. If we enter this in Racket and click run, we get the error define, expected an expression for the function body, but nothing's there. This tells us that we closed the define statement too early and left the body dangling out in the cold. The second part of a definition is after the keyword define, and I'll call it the name and argument section. It specifies the name of the function, in this case the name double, and the names of the arguments. In this case there's just one called n all wrapped up in a pair of parentheses. Common errors are leaving off either the parenthesis at the start, in this case the one right before double, or at the end of this section, in this case the one right after n. Functions can have as many arguments as they need. Here, for example, we have a function that computes the average brightness of a color, given the brightness of the red, green, and blue components of that color. Here the name of the function is brightness, and there are three parameters, r, g, and b. Note again that all of these are wrapped in a pair of parentheses, starting before the word brightness and after the b. The last part of a function definition is the body of the function. This is what is evaluated when the function is called. Before it is evaluated, though, all occurrences of the parameters in the body are replaced by the values of the corresponding arguments provided in the call. If we were to call our function double with the argument 7, then Racket would convert double 7 to a copy of the body with all of the instances of n replaced by the value 7. Then, when evaluating double 7, the computer would first replace it with plus 7, 7, which is the body with all instances of n replaced with the value 7. It would then use its internal definition of addition to replace plus 7, 7 with 14, which would be the result of calling double 7. Now let's look at a more complex example. Here the function quadratic takes four arguments, a, b, c, and x, and computes the value of the quadratic equation, a times x squared plus b times x plus c. Here again, when evaluating quadratic 2, 5, 3, 8, 
the computer would first replace that with the body of the function definition with all the parameters replaced by their corresponding values, which would give us open paren plus, open paren times, two, because a was replaced by two, eight twice, because x appears twice in the body and x is replaced by eight, close paren, open paren, multiplication, five, because b is replaced by five, eight, because eight is replaced by, uh, x is replaced by eight, close paren, three, because c is replaced by three, close paren. When we do all the arithmetic, this simplifies down to the final answer, which is 171. Here, the parameter b, for example, is in the second position in the parameter list, so it would be replaced by the second value in the call, which is the value five. Note that we have to replace all occurrences of every parameter with the corresponding argument value. There are three occurrences of x in the body, for example, which we've underlined here. The parameter x is in the fourth position in the definitions argument list, so we'll replace all three x's in the body with the fourth argument value, which is 8. Now let's head to Dr. Racket and define some simple functions. Let's start with the simple double definition. Up in the definition section, we'll start by setting up the define statement, an open parenthesis, the keyword define, and then on the next line, the close parenthesis that ends the define statement. Now we'll add the name and argument section after the keyword define, an open parenthesis, the name of the function, double in this case, the name of the arguments, just n in this case, and the close parenthesis that ends that section. Finally, we'll add the body, open parenthesis, plus, n, n, and the close parenthesis that ends the body. Here I put the body on a line of its own, so it's easier to see where it begins and ends. It's more common in Racket to move the close parenthesis that's currently on line three, which ends the defined statement, up to the end of line two after the body. Either placement works, this one is just more common in the racket community. People tend to prefer it because it doesn't add unnecessary vertical white space to longer sequences of definitions. Let's go down to the interactions pane and run our function by entering open paren double seven close paren at the racket prompt. That's the greater than symbol and pressing return or enter. That didn't go well. We got an error message in red that tells us that the function double isn't defined, but we just defined it, didn't we? If we look down at the bottom, there's also a warning highlighted in yellow that tells us that the definitions window has changed and that we should click run. Isn't that helpful? So let's click the run button in the upper right to load our function definition. There wasn't any sort of it's all good message, but the error and the warning went away, so that looks promising. So let's try running our function again. Open paren, double, seven, close paren. Yay! We got the right answer, 14. Note that we can use this function to double all sorts of numbers, like five, three halves, and 18.4. Now let's try the brightness function from before. Open paren, define, open paren, brightness, space R, space G, space B, close paren, and that finishes our name and argument section. Now we'll go to the body, open paren, divide, open paren, plus, R, G, B, close paren, three, close paren, and that closes the division, and another close paren, which closes the define. And so this computes the average of the three numbers by adding them together, the plus RGB, and then dividing by three, the number of values. Clicking run now loads both of these definitions, and we can call our new brightness function to compute averages of various color values, like 120, 150, and 210. That yields an average brightness of 160. Lastly, let's enter the quadratic function. Open paren define, 
Now we'll have the name and argument section, open paren quadratic, the name of the function, a, b, c, x, the name of the four arguments, close paren, and now we'll start the body, which is open paren plus, and we're going to add three terms together. The first is open paren multiplication a, x, x, close paren, so that gives us a times x squared, and then open paren multiplication bx, so that's b times x, and then finally c. Close paren, that finishes the, the addition that adds those three terms, and then another close paren which finishes the define and ends the definition. Clicking run now loads all three definitions, and we can call quadratic with arguments like 2, 3, 4, and 7, and it returns 123. Before we wrap up, let's click Run and notice that the bodies of all three of our definitions are highlighted in the definitions pane. What is that telling us? It's Dr. Rackett's way of saying that we haven't actually run any of the definitions we've defined there. If we make the call open paren double 19, close paren, for example, then the body of double is no longer highlighted because we have actually run it now. If you're including tests with your definitions, which is highly recommended, then the highlighting will point out which parts of your definitions have been covered by your tests. Going over how to write tests in Racket, however, is a subject for another day. So we did it. We defined several simple functions. Some had one parameter and some had several. Some had simple bodies and some had more complex bodies. In all cases though, the structure was the same. We have an encompassing defined expression that provides the structure for the entire definition. Then there's the name and argument section, which provides the name of the function, followed by as many parameter names as the function needs. Lastly, we have the body, which contains the actual logic of the function, telling the computer how to compute the desired result. As always, practice, practice, practice. Do as many exercises as you can. It's the only way you'll really improve your skills. And remember that we all get stuck, so definitely ask for a hand when that happens. Do you feel like you understand why we would define a function? How we define functions? How you'd call or use a function? How Racket evaluates functions? These are all really important questions, so definitely ask questions if you're unsure about any of this. And once again, credit for all the silly cartoons goes to Bing Image Creator with a little prompting from me.